we're approaching the start of a new year, so let's plan our 2021 beginning spreads. Grab your notebook and let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here and it is time to plan for 2021. I'll be using the Archer and Olive notebook for this setup and it comes in this pretty white box with botanical artwork and gold foiling. Nicely wrapped up on the inside is this Raven dot grid notebook and oh my gosh guys, how beautiful is this notebook. It was from the Halloween collection and I think they still have it on their website so I'll link it down below. You guys already know Archer and Olive always have beautiful, beautiful designs and this holographic design is just everything. I love the gilded edges as well. So take advantage of my discount code. Temi10 will give you 10% off anything on the Archer and Olive website. Here are the supplies I'll be using. So I haven't mentioned this yet, but I'm actually making this bullet journal for my little sister. So I'll be going for a more minimal setup, which will be great for you guys that like less art in your bullet journal. If you'd like to recreate or if you're curious about the supplies I'm using in this video, the first thing you'll need is a fine liner. My everyday pen is the Stadler Triplus Fine Liner and then I've also got two sizes of the Faber-Castell Pit pens. All the supplies I use will be linked down below. Next I've got my absolute favourite pens for calligraphy, so they're the Sepa Japanese calligraphy pens. The two smaller tips are hard brush tips and the bigger one is the soft tip. If you're new to brush lettering and calligraphy, I would advise you to start off with a hard tip brush pen. I personally find them easier to use, but this pen comes in a nice pack of three. The next pen is definitely optional if you're going for a completely minimal setup, but this is the Tombow Dual Brush Pen and it is an N89, which is a super light grey. And if you can't afford the Tombows, I just did a video reviewing some very cheap, very good brush pens, so I'll link that down below if you're interested. And finally I've got the white pen, which today I'll be using the Sakura Jelly Roll in the size 10. I've got some black, white and grey washi tape as optional extras. Okay, so time to plan. So this notebook has a very weirdly bound first page and this is the same as like every other notebook on the market, but I normally leave the blank side blank and then I normally have a key on the right side. But today we're not doing that. So I'm gonna write 2021 on the left side in this nice elegant kind of font. It's a font I found from defont.com and it's called Vogue. It's a really nice, elegant, sleek design. I really love it. And when I was thinking about this setup, this was the font that came to mind. So I'll link it down below if you're interested in it. It's just a really nice font. So I'm doing a basic sketch and pencil and this is just to get the overall general shape. And then I'm going to outline it with the thinnest fine liner I've got. Making mistakes at this point is fine because we're going to fill it in very soon. But you want to be quite confident with these strokes and you don't want to go back and forth. But having a nice continuous line will just make it look neater. So I'm filling it in with a brush pen and I'm just fixing up some of the edges with a fine liner. You'll also see me going back in with a white pen just to clean up the edges again. That is the very simple title page. On the right side of the page where the dots actually start in this notebook, I'm going to write the key. So I'm using the exact same font for the key title and doing the exact same technique of sketching it in pencil, outlining it with a thinner fine liner first and then filling it in with the brush pen. If you need to bullet journaling, a pencil is your best friend because it's always great to sketch out what you want and then just to erase it when you're done with it. So the symbols I'm using are quite similar to the normal bullet journaling method symbol, but if you're completely new to this system, I'll link Ryder Carroll's video down below. So he was the inventor of the bullet journal and there are other symbols that I haven't included here that you might find to be relevant. So I noticed I forgot to put a cross through the bottom, so the event missed slash cancel should have a cross through, <laughs> but I'll do that off camera. So I'm just finishing off the spread with a grey line with the Tombow pen, and of course you can do this in any colour you want, and then just some washi tape to complete the spread. 
finally I'm adding space at the bottom with year of and that's just space where my sister will write her word for the year and that's it for the cover page so let's move on to the grid spacing spread the first thing I do is number the spread so I want to know how many dots the spread is made up of horizontally and vertically and I'm also measuring the spread because I'm about to split the page up but I don't want to count dots a hundred billion times <laughs> so I'm going to measure where things should go and then mark out how many dots I'll need so the purpose of the spread is just to have a space where you can record how many dots you need to split your page into certain amounts. If you're familiar with a bullet journaling system, you will know that you're going to be setting up weekly spreads if you do that method. And there's some basic weekly spread layouts where you split your page into halves, thirds, quarters and so on. And so this spread just records how many dots you need for each of those so that splitting your page in future will be a lot easier. To be honest, it's quite a tedious spread to make, but once you get it right, it's so worth it for any future spreads you make in this journal. After a lot of measuring and counting, I'm adding how many dots I'll need so that next time I can just glance and I'll know exactly what I need. I'm finishing off the spread with grid spacing written at the bottom and then just adding some washi tape. On the right hand side, I'm going to make a quote page. I've gone for the quote, don't let anyone dull your sparkle. And that's because my sister is simply brilliant. She's doing amazing and I want this spread to be a reminder for her to continually shine. I finished the spread by adding some doodles, some dots and a drop shadow. And I think it's the perfect quote to start this setup. Now I've got the future log spread. So you already noticed I'm already making use of the grid spacing page and this is because I have to split my page in half vertically and in threes horizontally. So see what I said about making it so much easier just to look back and then knowing exactly what I need to do for it. When I discussed this whole setup with my sister, it was clear that she wouldn't really have a need for a future log spread but we decided on something more like an important dates or birthday spread. So that will be the purpose of this spread. So that's why I've gone for all 12 months on one page and I've just got the numbers for each month written in the gray and then I've gone over it to write out the month in a natural cursive. I'm using my trusty stamps for the calendars and it makes doing the spread super quick. So you see there's some spreads that didn't stamp very well and I realised much later on that it was because I'm in the starting pages of the book and the stamp performs well when it's got something completely flat to go down onto. So what I've ended up doing is to put a notepad just so it brings the page up. And I'm just filling in the missing dates with a fine liner pen and then I realised this is so wonky. It's like I've got the easy way out by using stamps and then I can't even stamp right really. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is for some of the months that are particularly wonky, I've got the Archer and Olive notepad where I can just rip pages from and stick them directly into. Because they're the exact same 160 DSM paper as the notebooks, it's a perfect match and I can just align the dots. So what I'm going to do is for some of the months like January, April and July, I will just re-stamp them on this other sheet and I will stick them down. With January's calendar, I'm just testing out a black header with white text and seeing if I prefer the look of that. Just to give the spread a little bit more dimension, it seems a little bit flat to me. So after sticking these down on what seems like a more reasonable level, I'm trying to let these black boxes hide my mistake and then I'm writing the days of the week using the white pen. And I'm loving how this is looking in comparison. I prefer the way this spread looks now. And now for the goal spread. So I'm splitting the left side of the page into four main boxes. And these are the four goals my sister wants to track this year. So we've got fitness, school, work and spiritual. And I've written a simple goals title at the top. So I've put them in the four boxes and this is a super simple spread just to give her the space to write the goals that she wants to write. 
On the right side of the page, I attempted to use these stamps for notebook therapy. So they look like really nice letter stamps, but I messed up <laughs> in so many ways. So the first thing is, it took forever for me to get it out of the box because of my nails, but I guess that's a me problem. But also, I didn't quite plan out where the letters were going to go, so from the start, I really saw that I was making them a little too far apart for the entire sentence to fit. And then I started stamping it wrong, so I started getting a border around each of the letters, which I don't like for this spread. So I'm using the same Archer and Olive notepad to cover this up and I'm just going to write the text in. Oh, this spread on the right is a simple information spread, so it's for how to set and accomplish goals. And hopefully this will help her to not only write her goals, but to help her to accomplish them. The first point is to make smarter goals. So you want to make your goals specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound, evaluative, and revisable. Then you want to write it down. So that is the purpose of the spread. And then break it down into small manageable steps so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Next, you want to hold yourself accountable by remaining focused and being disciplined. Then you can reward yourself and this will help you to reinforce positive actions. Finally, develop systems and habits. So I hope this spread helps you. If you're also goal setting, I'll post a picture of the spread on my Instagram and you can feel free to save that and use that in your own spreads. I'm just finishing the page with some washi tape and now to move on to the vision board spread. So we've just set all these goals and the purpose of this spread is just to help visualize them. So it simply gives space to cut and stick pictures that align to your goals and aligns to your passion and the objectives you've got for the year. And guys, let me tell you, it really does work. You will not believe my testimony. On my vision board from 2020, I put down certain brands I wanted to work with. I put down very optimistic milestones I wanted to hit and glory to God, I've been able to achieve and exceed. Let me know down in the comments, do you want to see a video on vision board planning and making a vision board? I can even do my 2021 vision board in a video if that's something you'd like to see. Let me know down in the comments. So this is it for the vision board spread. I kept it super simple because it's more about what you add to it. So I'm excited to see her complete the spread. Next, we've got the fitness tracker. So if you guys are familiar with my channel or my spreads, you know this is not something I've ever personally tracked. And so I needed my sister's guidance a lot on what she actually wanted from this spread. She is really big on netball. She plays at a very competitive level. And because of that, there's certain things she wants to keep track of during the year. So I've gone with a graph at the top with the months of the year written along the bottom and she can put in the numbers on the vertical axes and after using it throughout the year, it will come out looking like a really nice line graph. For the bottom of the spread, I've gone with this table. So she wants to use this part of the spread to track her measurements. So I've just got this rectangle that's split into all these little squares and I've got the months of the year along the top. And once again, she can fill it in with the relevant measurements she wants and then she can use it throughout the year. On the right side of the spread, we've got this meal ideas spread. So I'm going with the same simple title along the top. And before we continue, I've decided to go back to this weight line graph. I've decided to add horizontal lines that will help when she is using the spread. Okay, so back to the meal ideas spread. I've just got these four rectangles and she just wanted space for breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner ideas. I think this will be the perfect spread for it because it's super simple and it just gives her one place to refer to. I'm just finishing the spread up with some lines and some washi tape and that's it. Let's move on to the final spread. This is a savings tracker spread and it's a super simple spread for the three main things that she's saving towards. So I've got boxes at the bottom and it's going up in 200 pound increments and she can color each rectangle as the year goes on to keep track of her savings. And that's it for the spread, super simple title. And yeah, again, this is one of the spreads that will look better when it's complete. 
And finally, on the right side, I thought it would be a great idea to do a quote to complete the setup. So the quote I've gone for is, starve your distractions and feed your focus. My little sister is honestly a brilliant, brilliant girl and she is in a pivotal year at school. So this spread is just a reminder to keep her focused and motivated. And I've also strategically put it next to the savings tracker so that it would also help her to stay focused on her savings goals. Now I'm just finishing the spread with some washi tape and I just love how washi tape just adds something to the spread. It takes it from being super simple, super minimal and just elevates it a little bit. I really love that. Finally, I'm adding a drop shadow to the focus text and that concludes this setup. So yes, here's a flip through of my minimal-ish 2021 setup. I mean, it's definitely minimal for me if you're familiar with my spreads, but I love how it came out. So let me know what you think down in the comments. And the setup video for my bullet journal will be up soon. So keep an eye out for that. If you're watching for the future, I will link it down below. If you haven't picked your notebook for the new year, I did a whole video comparing four brands and that might help you with your choice. So take a look at that video and please like, please subscribe and I will see you on my next video. Goodbye.